Hello and welcome to another week of Devtoberfest. Uh, welcome to data and analytics sessions. I would like to remind you that Devtoberfest is taking the whole months of October and Wednesdays are data and analytics day. Uh, so we had presentations about the machine learning. We had presentations about CP Analytics Cloud. Today, we are talking mostly about data warehousing cloud. And I'm glad to have a great speaker for our session today, Dennis Osai, who is going to talk about uh, innovating uh, your IT landscape with SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, SAP BW Bridge. And just as a reminder, next week, we will have sessions about SAP data intelligence. And with that, I will stop sharing my screen and I will pass this to Dennis. Dennis, please share your screen and start your session. Yeah, thank you, Vitaly. Thank you very much for the great opening words. And also thank you very much for organizing this great session here for our customers and partners and uh, giving us here the opportunity um, to present our yeah, strategic feature that we are providing here to our customers in the um, public cloud. Um, today's topic, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, SAP uh, BW Bridge. Um, let me directly briefly share my screen. First question to you, Vitaly, um, do you already uh, see my screen? Yes, yes, I see the introduction slide. Okay, very nice. Um, yeah, a warm welcome again uh, to the audience. Um, thanks for joining this session. Thank you very much for your interest in our um, strategic data warehousing offering that we are providing here in the public cloud to the um, to our customers and um, of course our partners um, today's topic as mentioned sap data Wells cloud sap bw bridge um, before we talk about the um, content itself maybe a quick introduction from my side um, for the audience um, i'm dennis dennis osoy i'm part of sap's cloud success services team and here i'm uh, also myself primarily focusing on our overall unified data and analytics uh, portfolio and here especially also supporting customers to implement um, use cases here within our yeah, strategic solution SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, also SAP BW Bridge and also important for today also helping um, customers to um, yeah, accelerate the transition for example uh, to um, cloud data warehousing and without further ado let me directly start in terms of content, first of all, I would like to begin with an overview part that um, everyone here in the call has the same understanding, a common understanding about our offering here, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, SAP BW Bridge. Here, uh, first of all, I would like to talk about um, yeah, the key capabilities and also about the um, value proposition of SAP BW Bridge. After that, I would like to um, yeah, show you um, how we position SAP uh, BW Bridge in our overall data warehousing architecture. And last but not least, as part of the overview part, uh, important, um, yeah, important content for our existing customers. Here, I would like to show our SAP BW and BW 400 customers how they can save their existing um, yeah, investments with regards to SAP BW and uh, move them to the public cloud. And um, after that, as we have you also a more a technical audience, of course, I would like to show our whole offering live in the system today. In this regard, we start um, yeah, to take a look into the different development environments. And after that, today also the intention from my side is to implement an end-to-end -end use case today with you live in the system. Here, we will start to um, yeah, implement a data model within SAP BW Bridge load some yeah, um, data out of an SAP on-premise system directly into the public cloud. After that, we will also take a look into Data Warehouse Cloud Core itself, where we will also implement a so-called um, graphical view. And uh, last but not least, as a highlight, I also would like to um, yeah, show you that the visualization of our um, data model, which we have implemented then live today in the system, is then really easy to visualize using our strategic front-end solution, SAP Analytics Cloud. And um, important for you, of course, the Q&A part, important for you um, to know that in addition to me, 
our experts from SAP HANA uh, Competence Center and from our SAP Data Warehousing Product Management and Development team are live involved in the background uh, to us within the chat. So really feel free to ask all your specific questions you have here in the uh, chat, post them in the chat that we are able to answer all your questions or of course, feel free uh, to um, post them afterwards also uh, within the comment section. And um, yes, let me then directly start. First of all, I would like to start to give you an overview as mentioned about our um, yeah, strategic feature, so-called SAP BW Bridge, which is also especially designed for our yeah, existing SAP BW and BW 400 customers. And here, first of all, really, it is important to know that um, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud in general is our strategic target solution for all data warehousing use cases in the uh, public cloud. And SAP BW Bridge exactly is really a feature of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud that here on the one side provides our existing customers, existing SAP BW NetWeaver and SAP BW 400 customers a path to the public cloud. And um, of course, also um, important to know that SAP BW Bridge is not just targeting or uh, is just um, intended to be used by existing customers with SAP BW on-premise background. Of course, we have also currently customers within our overall portfolio without any SAP BW um, on-premise background, even they are using SAP BW Bridge to really um, yeah, get all the benefits of SAP BW Bridge in the public cloud. To the offering itself, here, as mentioned on the slide, in general, we are offering with SAP BW Bridge, SAP um, BW capabilities directly as part of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. And here, the first item, uh, first point here, important to understand that we are providing with an SAP BW Bridge um, connectivity and business content um, via proven SAP BW based data integration technology. That means it's then quite easy for our customers to connect SAP on-premise systems directly to SAP BW Bridge. And um, on top with the sec second point here on the slide, also important to understand that we are providing with an SAP BW Bridge enterprise ready staging layers of SAP BW. That means um, here we are providing our customers proven well-known SAP BW 400 objects um, as part of SAP BW Bridge that it's um, yeah, possible for our customers to build even new use cases with well-known objects. And this on the one side provides our existing customers, existing SAP BW customers, of course, the, um, yeah, um, the option to save their skills, to leverage their skills and to build even completely new use cases then with their well-known skills in the public cloud. And of course, with the first and second point here on the slide, we are providing then also completely new customers to build even completely new use cases um, with the um, Greenfield scenario, which we will also do um, yeah, live today in the system together. And um, last but not least, here also important to know for our um, SAP BW customers that we are providing our existing customers a tool supported move to transfer the SAP BW on premise investments via conversion tools directly into SAP BW Bridge. And um, next slide, an important slide. Also, in my opinion, it represents our overall data warehousing vision. Here we see our overall data warehousing portfolio and of course, how we position SAP BW Bridge in our overall data warehousing architecture. Um, as you can see, SAP BW Bridge is really part of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. And especially when we take a look at our existing customers, SAP BW Bridge provides um, yeah, them to accelerate the transition to cloud data warehousing while protecting their previous investments coming here, for example, from an SAP BW 7.3 up to SAP BW 400 2021 system. And um, of course, once the SAP BW on-premise investments artifacts have been transferred directly into SAP BW Bridge, of course, within our target architecture, with an SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, we are then providing our customers all the benefits of the public cloud, based then here, especially on SAP BW investments. 
And of course, then within our target architecture with SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, we are providing then our overall data warehousing customers in the public cloud, then to access, um, to get instant access to SAP data with SAP BW Bridge. And of course, then also to expand the data reach um, to different other sources directly with SAP Data Warehouse Cloud Core. And um, next slide, important slide for our uh, BW customers. Of course, from our side, we would like to support and automate this re-innovation where possible. And in this regard, from our side, from SAP side, we have developed um, conversion tools to provide our customers an automated way to transfer their SAP BW on-premise investments via the conversion tools into SAP BW Bridge. And here we are providing on the one side the shell conversion, which means primarily the metadata um, of our SAP BW on-premise artifacts can be transferred via conversion tools directly into SAP BW Bridge. On top, we are providing our customers the remote conversion, which means primarily the metadata, including the relevant business data can be transferred via yeah, here in this case, using the DMIS add-on and the conversion tools directly into SAP BW Bridge. And uh, both options are available for um, SAP BW 7.3 up to SAP BW 400 2021 systems. And um, of course, with regards to the time constraint here within this DEF Oktoberfest uh, session today, we will not talk about the complete process um, yeah, with regards to shell and remote conversion. In this regard, I really would like to highlight, I want to highlight um, that in our upcoming big SAP event, TechEd, I have also a dedicated session where I will present the details, the overall conversion, uh, complete conversion process for shell conversion and also for remote conversion. In this regard, really feel free to also attend to this TechEd session, DA301, Innovate and move SAP Business Warehouse to SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. And um, next slide, also an important slide for our overall system investigation today. Here we see the target architecture when our customers are operating SAP Data Warehouse Cloud together with the SAP BW Bridge yeah, feature. Here on the left side, we see SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, here mentioned as SAP Data Warehouse Cloud Core. And on the right side, we have SAP BW Bridge, which is then a primarily intended to be used um, based on, uh, for use cases based on yeah, on-premises SAP business suite systems to, for example, connect an SAP ECC system and an SAP S4 HANA system directly to SAP BW Bridge. And here, in my opinion, the most important part for SAP BW Bridge is really that our customers are still able to um, yeah, ingest the full semantic richness, for example, of the um, classical ABAP extractors. And in our case today, what we will do um, within SAP BW Bridge environment, here we will create, for example, a data source, data transfer process, and also a transformation. Of course, also an advanced data store object to persist the data within SAP BW Bridge. And um, where we will do it, here, first of all, we, uh, within the Eclipse environment, here we are going to use the um, BW modeling tools and also the ABAP um, development tools. And um, in addition to the Eclipse environment, there is then also a dedicated web-based UI available um, yeah, called SAP BW Bridge. It's UI5 based. This environment is really the main environment to administer the overall data and processes of SAP BW Bridge which we will also see today. In our case, we will uh, yeah, take a look or we will administer our advanced data store object to see if our yeah, data load has been successfully um, completed. After that, once we have seen the overall uh, BW bridge part, we will switch here to the DWC core environment. Here we have also a web-based UI available to um, yeah, implement native DWC core assets. And um, important to know here for the audience that SAP Data Warehouse Cloud Core environment is then a primarily um, yeah, intended to be used for use cases based on any non-SAP based source system, based on any SAP cloud solution or non-SAP um, yeah, cloud solution. And also let me highlight here, um, if um, your customers would like to load data out of an SAP S4 HANA cloud yeah, system, um, yeah, um, by loading data, for example, out of extraction enabled CDS views, 
she also declared a recommendation from our side is um, to connect them also directly to data wells cloud core and uh, before we take a look into the system a uh, step-by-step introduction to today's um, system demo or um, yeah, system part here first of all we will take a look into the eclipse environment here we will see um, yeah, which um, functionalities we are offering within eclipse especially with regards to sap bw bridge then once we have seen the eclipse environment and the functionalities of course we will also start today to create here our um, yeah, required projects in our case a so-called um, bw bridge project and also an other uh, cloud project after that as mentioned as an highlight today i really would like to implement live together with you in the system an end-to-end -end data model in this regard we will first create a data flow object within sap bw bridge here then a data source then a transformation data transfer process to load the appropriate data into our info provider in our case it's then a standard at once data store object and um, once we have um, yeah, implemented our data model. Of course, I also will execute today our data transfer process to load the data coming from SAP on-premise system into BW Bridge. And this is also the time where I, our jump takes place into SAP BW Bridge cockpit. As mentioned, this is the main environment to administer our overall data and processes of SAP BW Bridge. And in our case, we will um, take a look into our uh, advanced data store object to see if the requests have been um, successfully uh, completed, if the data is really available within the active table. And um, yes, after that, once we have seen the overall BW bridge part and have um, uh, once we have implemented our data model, we will switch to SAP Data Warehouse Cloud Core itself. Here then to a specific space called SAP BW Bridge to access our SAP BW bridge data here in our case using remote tables. And once we have um, imported the so-called remote tables, the next step from our side is um, to use the um, cross space sharing approach of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. And after that, of course, we will start to implement our native DW secure uh, data model. And from my side today, I also would like to upload some flat file data um, yeah, um, in our case, master data uh, out of a C CSV file directly to SAP Data Warehouse Cloud Core. Then we will create a so-called um, graphical view to join the data coming from BW Bridge with the data uh, uh, coming from our CSV file, flat file. And as mentioned, as an highlight today, I also would like to um, show you that the visualization of our own data model here then in our case is yeah, really easy using SAP um, Analytics Cloud. And uh, with that, I would say, let me directly switch into the system. Um, first of all, let me log in to my um, Data Warehouse Cloud tenant. Nice. Um, here we have a yeah, regular Data Warehouse Cloud tenant. First of all, really, I would like to mention and also important to know for the audience here that um, SAP BW Bridge is an additional feature of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. And um, unlike other regular Data Warehouse Cloud core functionalities, um, SAP BW Bridge is not out of the box available. Therefore, if customers are really interested in SAP BW Bridge, they have to really communicate that to SAP. And uh, once this has been done, once uh, the feature toggle has been activated in your specific Data Warehouse Cloud Core tenant, there is then a specific space available within SAP Data Warehouse Cloud um, Core itself. This space um, is then uh, the so-called um, SAP uh, BW Bridge space. And it's important to know that this space really will be generated by SAP. There is a dedicated provisioning process uh, provided by SAP once the cost, uh, customer is really interested in um, SAP BW Bridge. And this space has also a specific type here, um, SAP BW Bridge. All other spaces here within this tenant and also of course in any other tenant are um, yeah, space type SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. Here we have really a specific space type and within this space, 
that, as mentioned, will be generated then by SAP. There is then also a predefined connection. This connection will also be um, defined by SAP. Let's take a look into this connection here, this one. Let me briefly switch back to our slides. This connection we have seen is um, exactly the connection here between SAP Data Warehouse Cloud and SAP BW Bridge. And um, this is really technically required as um, SAP BW Bridge runs in the background and then separate ABAP tenant within the SAP business technology platform and therefore also needs to be additionally provisioned to SAP uh, uh, Data Warehouse Cloud Core. And here exactly this connection is then the connection between SAP Data Warehouse Cloud Core and SAP BW Bridge. And let's take a look uh, into that connection. This connection is an SAP HANA Cloud connection using the SAP HANA Cloud ODBC adapter with um, two endpoints. Here the first endpoint, the SAP HANA SQL access is um, yeah, um, relevant to get the um, data itself. The HTTP access, for example, is relevant to get the metadata. And um, in my opinion, the most important part here within this um, connection that then will be generated by SAP is the so-called SAP BW service key. This service key um, in general contains all the communication parameters to the ABAP instance of SAP BW Bridge, which then in the background, as mentioned, runs in a separate ABAP tenant within the SAP Business Technology Platform. And in our case, this service key is also needed to create the relevant projects uh, within the Eclipse environment. And for this, there's also a specific copy button available. Let me copy here um, this service key. And now let me switch to Eclipse. Here we are in the Eclipse environment. It's the main development environment really for um, SAP BW Bridge. Here, for example, within a window perspective, open perspective than other. You will see here, as mentioned, we are still using the BW, uh, BW modeling tools and also the ABAP development tools. In this regard, there are then in the end two projects for each system in a system landscape. One is so-called BW Bridge project related here to the BW modeling tools. And in addition to that, also ABAP Cloud project that here then relates to the ABAP uh, development tools. And uh, for now, let me log in into our um, main development tenant of our development colleagues. Here, as you can see, we have still the division into BW repository and data sources. Within a BW repository, we have then our um, yeah, um, well-known info areas. Within uh, the data sources part, we have then our various source systems in context of ODP. Here, for example, in our case, um, we have connected various SAP BW on-premise systems in context of um, yeah, ODP BW. Then we have connected um, yes, various SAP on-premise systems in context of ODP SAP. On top of that, from our side, we have connected uh, yeah, two SAP HANA databases in context of ODP HANA directly to SAP BW Bridge. As you can see, also SLT-based source systems can also be connected directly to SAP BW Bridge. And um, last but not least, as you can see, um, as we are providing here the overall benefits of the operational data provisioning framework here, we have also connected CDS views in context of ODP CDS. But here, as mentioned, within our overview part, the clear recommendation from our side, from SAP side, is to really uh, connect CDS views, extraction enabled CDS views, then directly to SAP Data Warehouse Cloud Core, or also here, for example, an SAP HANA system also um, here, the recommendation is to connect an SAP HANA database also directly to SAP Data Warehouse Cloud Core. Nevertheless, we are offering all the functionalities here. That means customers could also, um, of course, connect them here directly to SAP BW Bridge. And here, let me uh, briefly right click to my own info area. As you can see, we have here um, well known proven SAP BW for HANA objects available objects up to the composite provider. Here, for example, a data flow object, which we will also use today. Process chain to load, for example, data in an automated way directly to SAP BW Bridge. A composite provider is available. Um, different types of advanced data store objects are still available. And in my opinion, also very important 
info objects are still available and also some other objects like for example transformation data transfer process etc which we will then also use uh, today what's here not available the overall OLAP engine is for example not available this means for example queries are not available and or um, visible here within sap bw bridge here let me highlight that uh, we have an yeah upcoming um, yeah event, um, strategic feature also for sap bw bridge that means uh, in general it is possible to transfer sap bw on on premise queries via the conversion tools directly into sap bw bridge they are then first of all here um, as metadata artifacts available within the sap bw bridge uh, environment however they are um, technically then not um, visible and executable right here we are um, here we will provide our customers as part of sap data warehouse cloud core uh, a feature to import then the transferred sap bw queries as um, native dwc core um, yeah, assets and to reuse then also their overall OLAP yeah, implementation. And from my part, as mentioned, as an highlight, I really would like to create now the required projects here within SAP uh, BWH here, especially within the Eclipse environment. <clears throat> here, let me right click. First of all, let me create my project. Here, uh, a so-called BW Bridge project. In the next wizard, we have to define how we would like to define the connection to the um, ABAP instance of SAP uh, BW Bridge. And in this case, as mentioned, SAP is providing the so-called service key. Here we have the service key, which we have copied. Let me just um, briefly adjust this service key. Right, very nice. Then next, we have to authenticate ourselves uh, to this appropriate tenant. Basically, otherwise, um, anyone would have access to this tenant by using this service key. And this is really not the intention. <laughs> and uh, next, we can define here, of course, a name for our project. Let me define it as zero dev over quest. And let me click here on finish. Now we have created our BW Bridge project. Then the next step from my side is to create a so-called um, ABAP cloud project. Here again, I want to use the service key. <clears throat> Let me add here the service key. And then uh, after that, we have to authenticate ourselves again. And here in this case, of course, the IDP of SAP in the background checks then whether I have access to this tenant or not. And next, I would like to uh, define here again a uh, project name, zero dev tober fest. Let me also add ABAP here. Here, finish. Now, let me open my project. As you can see, BW repository and data sources are available. Within BW repository, um, yeah, we have then our info areas as mentioned, but before that, let me briefly open the data sources part. And this is the tenant of our product management colleagues. And here we have co connected, for example, um, an SAP BW on-premise system in context of ODP BW to access here then data out of um, yeah, regular um, SAP BW on-premise um, yeah, info providers. Here, let me um, right click to my um, source system. Just a few seconds, please. And let me here create then my data source. And then I have to define the name of the um, operational data provider. And in this case, I would like to load some sales data, in our case, some um, transactional data directly into SAP BW Bridge and with that directly, um, yes, to the uh, public cloud. <clears throat> yep, very nice. Then next. I, uh, I am able to define an own um, technical name. Let me define, for example, here Z dev um, yeah, fest, for example. And then um,
Then with regards to the time constraint, I have already defined a transport request here. And uh, let me select this one. Just a few seconds, please. Then here, um, maybe let me switch here to the fields tab and activate my data source. As you can see, um, we have here still um, ABAP data types available within SAP BW Bridge. As you can see, um, the primary key field, for example, have also has been also a predefined directly by creating this data source and um, next I want to create a so-called um, let me create an info area here define here again a technical name and the description 2020 uh, Okay, then next let me add my info area to my favorites. Okay, it's available here. Then within my own info area, I would like to create then a so-called data flow object. Then here, uh, first of all, I would like to add our data source, which we have created uh, together, add object. And after that, by using the drag and drop functionality here, I would like to add the advanced data store object, connect the uh, data source with my advanced data store object uh, wrapper, double click here, and let me create an advanced data store object here. Let me just uh, do, do, do. just a few seconds. <clears throat> And here again, I have to select now my uh, transport request. And um, here, as you can see, within SAP BW Bridge, we are providing then uh, yeah, various types of, um, yeah, of the advanced data store object here, for example, a standard advanced data store object with an inbound table, active table, and also with the change log. Um, in our case, I would like to use a standard at once data store object and with the change log, for example, 
we are providing our customers the great benefit of the data mechanism, for example, with the change log within SAP BW Bridge, we can then track all the change history of our data records and also load, for example, subsequent targets in a data mechanism. And um, as you can see, um, staging at once data store object is also available. A data mart data store object is available. Even uh, yeah, direct update data store objects are also available. And um, next, I would like to um, create a transformation here. Just a few seconds. Uh, again, the transport request needs to be selected. And uh, with the, trans, uh, the transformation, as you can see, for example, we are able here to use a start routine or to define a start routine, end routine, and also an expert routine using um, ABAP. And um, yeah, just in terms of completeness, I would like to do, of course, also something with the transformation. Here, let me, for example, switch the runtime from ABAP runtime to um, yeah, SAP HANA runtime which is also always, of course, the recommended runtime by SAP to yeah, really use the power of the underlying SAP HANA cloud database. And let me activate now this object. And as you can see here on the right, we are now also able with the SAP HANA runtime to create a so-called um, yeah, ABAP managed database procedure using SQL script. Then here also even within SAP um, yeah, BW Bridge. Next, from my side, I want to create now a data transfer process. Next. Just a few seconds again, please. <laughs> the system seems to be a little bit slow today. Okay, just let me here change the uh, type to full. And here within the extraction tab, I really would like to uh, define here also a, a filter a criteria, for example, and um, uh, moment, please. So I'm seeing here the um, overview of the live stream and I'm not able to um, write change dot needs to be yeah I would like to define a restriction to also load some data in a more automated way 160101 and also here 2020-0101 and let me here uh, for example define a range 
and let me now activate my um, data transfer process. Hmm. Okay, nice. Then the next step really let me also activate my uh, data flow. And um, now we have implemented our um, yeah, use case within uh, SAP BW Bridge. And of course, I also would like to execute now my data transfer process to load the data. And here, let me click on execute in background and execute and open monitor. And now we will uh, switch to the uh, so-called SAP BW Bridge uh, cockpit. As mentioned, this is the main environment for administering the overall data and processes. And in my case, um, let's, I would like to check if really the data um, has been successfully loaded. Just a few seconds, please. Uh, let me refresh you the screen. Okay, very nice. We have loaded, um, yeah, almost, yeah, uh, 3,000 data records. Let me manage my request to, um, yeah, move the data from the inbound table to the active table. And let me activate now my request. Let's take a look into our advanced data store object, so our active table to uh, yeah to be on the safe side that the data is also really available with an SAP BW bridge. And uh, yeah, very nice. The data is available. Now we have implemented our first case here within SAP BW bridge itself. Let me briefly do a recap within our slides. What we have seen now, we have seen the overall BW bridge part. We have seen uh, the Eclipse environment using the BW modeling tools and also the ABAP development tools. We have created our data model by creating a data source, DTP transformation, and also an advanced data store object. And um, last but not least, we have also seen the UI5 based environment for SAP BW bridge. Next, I would like to switch to Dataverse Cloud Core itself. Here, first of all, to a specific space called SAP BW bridge to, um, yeah, in our case, access our SAP uh, BW bridge data um, yeah, out of our uh, advanced data store object here via um, remote tables. And then we will use the cross space sharing functionality of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud to share our imported remote tables with other regular DWC core spaces. And um, yeah, with that, let me switch again back to the system. Yeah, let me close this one here. Here, first of all, we need to navigate here to the data builder and then here especially to the uh, data builder that relates to the BW bridge space. And here, as you can see, we are not able to create, for example, tables, graphical views, SQL views, or also even um, yeah, implement complex logic in Python. Of course, regular functionalities of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud are available here within this tenant, but in other regular DWC spaces. The main purpose here is to really access the SAP BW bridge data via remote tables. In this regard, here is an import button. Then we have to select import remote tables. Then within the next wizard, we see um, our um, yeah, info areas. In our case here, we see our um, info area, which we have created together. And here also our um, advanced data store object. Let me select this one, next step. Within the next step, as you can see, we are able to define here an own business name and also a technical name. But for now, I would like to leave it as it is. And by clicking on import and deploy, this remote table will be generated within our SAP BW bridge space. And um, through this remote table, we are then able to access our SAP BW bridge data. 
let me briefly take a look also into this remote table to yeah, really check if the data is available here. Just a few seconds, please. It needs to be first of all deployed. Okay, it has been successfully deployed. Let me check if really data is available here. Yes, the data is available. Very nice. The next step from my side is really to use the cross space sharing functionality. In this regard, here is a share button available within this space. Here I need to share this remote table with other regular uh, DWC core spaces. And in this regard, I have already created a space called um, DevToberfest. Let me share this um, remote table. And as you can see, the remote table has been shared with read access with this space. And next, within the data builder, uh, I need to um, yeah, switch to the um, data builder that relates then to my uh, dev to turbofest space. This is really a regular DWC core space. Here we see, here as you can see, we are then able to leverage all the well-known uh, functionalities. And um, as mentioned within the um, yeah, introduction part, I also would like to upload now some flat file data into this system. Here, let me just uh, import here the CSV file. I've already uh, prepared this CSV file. Let me up um, upload the data here in this case. Here we have some master data. So um, just to see also um, regular um, DWC core functionalities, let me here use the data wrangling functionality of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. Let me, for example, change the data type from an integer to string. And here um, now let me just briefly deploy uh, the table. Okay, very nice. Table has also been successfully deployed. Checking, let me check if the data really is available. Let me do a preview here. Okay, the data is available. Very nice. Now the next step from my side is to create a graphical view here to join the data coming from BW Bridge with the data coming from our CSV file. Of course, I also could do it in a SQL-based way, but also to yeah, show you here the self-service data warehousing uh, functionalities of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. I would like to do it by using a graphical view here within a repository, shared objects and um, tables. We see then our um, remote table that have been shared with this space. Then within the tables, let me add my table here, join them together. And within the uh, join node, of course, I have then to um, define the um, join condition. In this, connect, uh, in this case, I would like to join uh, the data based on partner ID and business partner. Next, let me also add here, here a projection node exclude some columns that are not um, yeah, relevant in our case for our story within um, SAC. Now let me um, select columns that would be necessary or relevant for us or are necessary for us. Let me select here those columns, restore them. And uh, within the um, output node, we are then able to define here a business name and the technical name. I have also to define the um, uh, semantic usage type uh, as analytical data set that the data is then really available uh, within SAC or any other third party tool, of course. And then I have to define some measures here. Let me change them to um, measure. And now let me deploy my view. 
<clears throat> so before we switch to um, SAC, let us of course briefly check if the data is really available. Just let's wait, uh, let us wait that the uh, status is set to deployed. Okay, very nice. Let me do here a preview. Okay, very nice. As you can see, the data is available. In our case, we are getting the company data out of our CSV file, right? Master data and the relevant transactional data are coming out of BW Bridge. And now, as mentioned, as an highlight, I also would like to switch to um, SAP um, Analytics Cloud. Let me um, briefly open the SAC tenant. Um, here we have already a predefined connection between our DWC con uh, tenant and SAC tenant. Here's the live data connection already um, yeah, have been already defined. Let me here briefly create a story. Just the canvas. In my case, I would like to use the classical de design experience. Of course, the recommended way by SAP now is to use the <laughs> optimized design experience. And um, now let me just here click on uh, data. Here I have then to um, yeah, select database cloud. Where we have already defined a connection, DWC uh, PM to the, um, yeah, the database cloud tenant of our product management colleagues. And then I have to select the space. In my case, it's this one here. Here we have our view that we have created now together. Let me select this one and let me just briefly here create a chart. Here, I would like to add some measures here, for example, gross amount, net amount, tax amount, and also uh, my master data that you really see that it's really easy to visualize all the data here. Just in terms of completeness, let me also here uh, define a filter uh, definition to my uh, company name. And let me, for example, um, yeah, filter the company name here to fitness world to see uh, the data um, here for example we see that we have for fitness world this gross amount this net amount and also this um, tax amount and um, yes very nice we have seen our overall a complete end-to-end um, -end use case now we have implemented them within bw bridge database cloud and also within um, yeah sac and now, before I hand over back to Vitaly, I also would like to share this slide with you. Um, important slide with important SAP notes and references regarding SAP BW Bridge. Here, in my opinion, the uh, most important SAP note is the central note, the 3117800. And um, also, this SAP note is really important to know the um, yeah, central note for SAP BW Bridge conversion. Both nodes are always um, yeah, um, really up to date, maintained by our development manager Udo Bates and our uh, experts from the SAP HANA Competence Center. Here the central node is um, yeah, um, 3141688. And here also a useful slide for you with additional um, yeah, um, information references regarding SAP BW Bridge. Here we have, for example, a detailed documentation on our help page. And of course, we have um, also, let me mention uh, that we have published dedicated blog posts within our overall community, where we also received a lot of uh, attention from various customers and partners around the world. Also, here are really interesting questions. Feel free really to check these assets and also feel free to ask your questions with um, maybe under this blog post that the whole community can benefit from your questions and the answers of our experts. And here also let me mention, for example, this blog post by my colleague, Frank Riesner, a really experienced colleague. Here he is describing um, our offering on SAP education side with regards to SAP BW Bridge. And uh, here let me also, for example, highlight the um, conversion guide. Here we have a specific conversion guide 
that describes really on a detailed level end to end which activities needs to be done to um, um, yeah, transfer your SAP BW on premise uh, investments directly to SAP BW Bridge. In addition to this conversion guide, I have also, for example, published a dedicated conversion blog post where I'm also describing which activities needs to be done at which point in time to successfully transfer or convert um, your SAP BW on-premise footprint to our strategic solution, SAP uh, Dataverse Cloud. And here also a useful slide, also for our upcoming big SAP TechEd event. As mentioned, I have there also a um, yeah, specific session where I will present the overall details for shell and um, remote conversion. Feel free really to attend also to this session and also here an important slide to um, complement your learning journey for our upcoming SAP TechEd event. For this, check out the link learning.zap.com slash TechEd. And um, with that, of course, um, thank you again. Thank you very much for uh, joining this session, for your interest in our uh, yeah, strategic data warehousing solution in the public cloud. Um, of course, as mentioned, feel free to post all your questions here in the chat or feel free to just send me an email and um, i wish you of course a successful journey to the cloud a successful journey towards our yeah, strategic data warehousing offering um, in the public cloud and um, yeah thank you very much and um, let me hand over back to um, you vitali thank you thank you dennis it was really impressive for me as a long time bw consultant in the past uh, it was as well uh something that refreshed my memories and uh, gave me you know an overview of what is happening right now where this whole cloud offering is going yeah. uh, and just a quick question uh sorry if i missed to get it exactly but what is the difference between the shell and remote conversions oh yeah a great question vitaly um let me maybe also switch back to this um slide um, yeah, the main difference between shell and remote conversion is really that we are transferring within the shell conversion only, I would say, only the metadata. So um, there is then no transfer or synchronization of existing data sets. So um, customers can then choose, of course, by their own if they would like to load the historical data uh, from the sender system after the conversion or after the transfer. Uh, by connecting the sender system directly to SAP BW Bridge and loading the data out of the um, relevant info providers, then into the transferred um, info providers into SAP BW Bridge. So um, therefore, the shell conversion can also be seen as an accelerated greenfield approach. So really, there is no transfer of the existing data set. So customers could also yeah, probably also completely ignore the historical data and start completely fresh. And the difference here is that within the remote conversion, we are really transferring automatically based on the conversion tools, um, the um, metadata, including the relevant business data. Here in our case, we are using in the background RFC report, RFC cluster tables and reports, and really important to know, based on the DMIS add-on, we are transferring then the um, yeah, data as well. And um, as mentioned, both options are really available for SAP BW 7.3 up to SAP BW 400 2021. And um, yeah, I hope <laughs> this question yeah. was good. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you for answering that. Uh, once again, Denis, thank you for your very insightful presentation. Thanks to everyone who participated in uh, today's session. Um, no matter if you're participating live or if you are watching the recording, I would like to remind that if you are participating in the Oktoberfest contest and if you are collecting points, then there is a validation web page for you created where you can validate that you uh, understood the content, pre uh, content presented uh, by uh, Dennis today and by answering this uh, validation questions you can get additional uh, points. The link to this validation web page is in the comments of the event page on the uh, Deftoberfest group on SAP community and as well on the YouTube video description. 
That's all for now. Once again, thank you for joining. Thank you for participating and enjoy the rest of Oktoberfest. Bye. Bye. <laughs>